staying with us, let's move on to one of the biggest talking points and biggest controversies today. In fact, not just today, in the last several months, the massive face-off that's been brewing between social media giant Twitter and the government. And today, it took a very, very big twist when Twitter was booked by the UP police. Now, let's tell you what happened from the beginning and why there's been so much of controversy. It's essentially because the government came out with a new set of rules, a new set of rules under the Information Technology Act for our social media giants. And they were given three months to comply with these rules in terms of setting up and appointing nodal officers, compliance officers, grievance cells uh, who should be based in India so that they're accountable for what goes on on their platforms and grievances can be heard. Three months were given. Almost every other social media platform met that deadline or at least sought extension for a few days and managed to, except Twitter. Twitter has essentially failed to comply with these new rules so far. And so what government sources seem to suggest is that because Twitter hasn't complied with these rules, it isn't an intermediary anymore for us. If you don't follow the rules, we will not consider you an intermediary anymore. And despite multiple warnings, no compliance has happened. Twitter sought for an extension, an extension was given. But even after that, even after several weeks have passed, Twitter India has not appointed full-fledged, based in India, grievance and compliance officers. They figured out one interim nodal officer who was also a third-party member, a lawyer, with another firm who they said will represent us, which obviously did not seem to work with the government. So now as the government stops treating Twitter as an intermediary, many say that it's legal shield of that given to an intermediary as a platform. The shield that you have as a platform is gone. Now once that shield is gone, then you will be held accountable for what is on your platform. And so, in a first example of that, the Uttar Pradesh police has booked Twitter along with about eight other people, mostly journalists or activists, who tweeted about this one specific story. The story of this man in Ghaziabad who was assaulted, his beard was cut off. And that video had gone viral and everybody covered that story. Now, that man claimed that he had also been asked to chant Jai Shri Ram. A Muslim man said, while he was harassed, targeted and beaten, this is what was also told to him. The police carried out an investigation and the police said, well, that's not the case. This isn't even in our FIR or the complaint that they gave us. In fact, this is not even a hate crime. This is not even a communal crime. This is simply a, a fight and a disagreement that happened between two groups. And these people had bought something from him and they were unhappy with it. And which is why they got into an argument and they attacked him. The police obviously cannot deny the assault, but they're denying the communal aspect of the assault. Now, once this became clear, the police then went after those who had only reported one side of the story, which obviously can be misleading without all the facts available. This included Twitter. So, in a, in a first of an ex kind, Twitter has been accused of inciting communal sentiments with statements with a, you know, uh, which are provocative with an intent to trigger riots, trigger a mischief. Everything that has been attributed to any of those people who use the Twitter platform to share this story has also now been applied to the platform. And as well as the fact that Twitter did not act in time in removing these tweets. Now, once you know what the Ghaziabad police is saying on record, did you act against these tweets? You call them manipulated media as you do with several other tweets on your platform. So there could be several reasons, but Twitter has now been booked. So tonight, let's have a conversation about the fact that when the government of a country comes up with a set of regulations, you either comply with the regulations or you challenge these regulations in a court of law. You go to the court and you say that these regulations do not stand the test of legality, the test of constitution, and we are not okay with it. Or you comply. Twitter has done neither, which is where the problem lies for many people. 
Tonight, I ask this question to the panelists who are joining us. Why is Twitter being so brazen and has now Twitter crossed that line of defiance when it comes to a large, responsible social media giant? I say good evening to Dr. Pavan Dugal, cyber law expert, Rahul Narayan, advocate with the Supreme Court, uh, Ramanjeet Singh Chima, senior international counsel, and Asia Pacific policy director at Access Now, Charu Pragya of the BJP, Anshul Avajit of the Congress Party, Mishri Chaudhary, lawyer and legal director at uh, Software Freedom Law Center in New York, joining us this evening. Uh, let me actually begin with Pavan Dugal on this one. Mr. Dugal, we've had conversations about the new rules. And let's start off with the larger picture, the new rules itself. Uh, and, you know, while there may be disagreements on whether all of those rules are good or bad or problematic, constitutional, not constitutional, if anybody disagrees with them, should they not be going to court? Twitter seems to have done neither of these two. So the dictum of law is very clear. You cannot be a mute spectator when law is asking you to do some cognitive acts. You either comply or you complain. If you complain, go to a court of competent jurisdiction and the court will then adjudicate. But even while the court is adjudicating, if the court has not put a stay on the operation of the said uh, uh, legal provisions, you have no choices but to comply. But if you don't comply, or if you just give your declaration that you have an intention to comply, that alone does not give you any kind of a legal sucker or remedy for the very simple reason that you will now be exposed to legal consequences. Because in the concept of law, that you are either complying with law or you're not complying with law. And once you don't comply with law, then whatever the consequences of law are stipulated will automatically come and visit you. In this particular case, where, which, are, which we are discussing, the issue is that the government comes up with the IT rules 2021, 90 days given uh, to the big service providers of social media, called significant social media service providers to comply with some additional parameters of due diligence. They don't get complied with, which effectively means that as a result of operation of Rule 7, of the IT Rules 2021, all of uh, these uh, intermediaries who do not comply with these rules under that stipulated time frame are automatically stripped of their statutory exemption from legal liability, their suraksha coverage. Now, there's a lot of controversy happening is their status as an intermediary gone? Is it gone, not gone? Look, they continue to be intermediaries under Section 21W of the IT Act mm -hmm. because their intrinsic quality and characteristics does not change. However, if they are going to be stripped of their statutory exemption from legal liability, they are now being asked to go and fight a battle on a battlefield without protective gear, which effectively means they are now going to be exposed to two kinds of uh, legal consequences. One, of course, is that they can be sued for injunctions and damages under the IT Act okay. and under the normal law. But more significantly, they can also be criminally prosecuted and punished for offenses. And since the company can't be sent to jail, it's the top management which can be sent to jail. Uh, they can be arrested and they can be punished for these offenses under the provisions of Section 793A and Section 85 of the Information Technology Act. So I okay. think it's a fundamental uh, issue that's written large on the wall. You come to India, you're more than welcome. You comply with law, we are more than welcome to have you. You don't comply with law, please face the consequences of law. Hmm. Okay. Uh, like you said, there is now a debate that's broken out whether about this whole legal shield concept and losing the status of an intermediary. Rahul Narayan, do you agree with this argument that if you don't comply, then you're not in, considered as an intermediary by default and thereby you're liable for anything that's on your platform uh, and can be sued for it. That's, a, that's, a, that, that's the correct position on law, I, I think, because, I mean, frankly, as Dr. Dukal has been saying, you have to comply with the law or you suffer the consequences. The law right now provides that unless you do these particular things, you're going to lose your protection, the, the safe harbor protection. So while you continue to be an intermediary, you won't enjoy the protection anymore. So unless Twitter manages to get some kind of court order staying them, they have opened themselves up to, to this liability. But that said, it might not be necessarily the wisest or the smartest move uh, uh, on the part of the government to play this up a bit and create a, a massive controversy. If, for example, Twitter is, is going to comply with it sooner rather than later, then perhaps it might be prudent to give them a chance, not for any other reason, but for the simple fact that, you know, uh, a government of India fighting a, a private, a, a foreign investor and a, a private in, in entity which has significant impact on free, free speech rights in India. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a, a great thing for the government to be doing. 
you, you're saying we should give them more time, but why should we? We gave them, what, now three and a half months? Why should the government give them more time? Three and a half months is fair. Surely in a country with 1.25 billion people, they could have found these three eligible candidates. See, right now they have they already have appointed some people under on, under a contract. Now the requirement of the law is to have them as employees, and they are they they've said apparently that in the last couple of days that they they are going to hire people. Yeah. So that said, in any case, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And the more important thing about Rule Seven, I think, and that's important to bring into this debate as well, is that it's not for the government to decide whether this has happened or not. The the uh, as far as Rule Seven is concerned, it says that if you don't comply with the rules, you lose your protection. That has to be that determination will have to be made by a court. So until that happens, it's it's a matter of everybody saying, oh, you you haven't complied, you haven't complied. And by the time it comes to trial, chances are probably they would have either complied or the rules would have been struck down as unconstitutional, perhaps, or they would have challenged the rules or obtained the stay. One of the three things would happen. So in the end, uh, this this is all happening now. But I don't see this as uh, as part of the end game. This is just the beginning. This is definitely just the beginning and you know, so, so neither of the two sides seem to be going to court. Neither is the government going to court saying, oh, they didn't comply, uh, nor is Twitter going to, go, uh, going to court saying, oh, I don't like these rules. But what is happening, uh, Mishri Chaudhary, is that the government's find, found another way, which is to start, you know, holding them accountable and booking them for content which is on their platform. It could be this today, tomorrow it could be because one congressman has now, you know, claimed on the on Twitter that the uh, calf serum is being put into vaccines after cows being slaughtered. Uh, and Twitter could be held liable for putting out that kind of, a, you know, vac a spreading vaccine fear now. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right about the fact that what is happening here is that uh, the problem of disinformation or misinformation, which colloquially is called fake news, is not just an India-only problem. World over, all governments are now trying to address that issue, but no government is trying to impose criminal liability for the employees of any kind of a platform which is what this exemption provision, which is Section 79 and the new rules are asking for. Now, they say that there is going to be criminal liability for the employees of platforms if, for, if I, for example, use Twitter to put out some defamatory content or some misinformation or something which is unlawful. Then for my action to hold Twitter's, whoever they appoint, personal responsible defeats the very purpose of why this amendment to the IT Act was made. The idea was that there is going to be billions of info pieces of information and these requests, these parties should not be the one who should adjudicate whether these are right, these are wrong, etc. And they're private parties. And that is why the Supreme Court said in 2015, it's Shriya Sengal Malchit matter, that only if you receive a court order or a government reasoned order, not just request by a police officer or something, that's when you take it down. And that is why you get the safe harbor provisions. So first part is that this is not just an India problem. Everybody's trying to do it either. They're trying to find them which is where it, the bottom line or the top line of a company's hit. Nobody is doing criminal liability. Now, that kind of criminal liability issue really makes it a very difficult problem for any kind of a platform. Having said that, there is some appointment in the interim. Uh, the second thing I'm going to say is neither the ministers nor the government nor anybody else gives any status of intermediary and can take away this legal shield. It's not like a trademark registration that you register a trademark and you're granted one and then you forgot to renew the registration and somebody takes it away or a domain name registration. This is a legal exemption. It's an exemption provision. This is from legal liability. For example, the one which you just stated. This is not the first time Twitter or any party has been impleded. A lot of cases have been filed over the years where they are added as a party. Then platforms like Facebook, like YouTube or, or Google or anybody or Twitter will stand up in a court and said, well, we got actual knowledge by a court order or government agency. We removed it in time and we followed whatever the rules said. So we are not responsible. It is the user who's responsible. Now, that is something which will be decided by courts. It's not that something through tweets or which is not even real press release or just making this public theater that the government or anybody can take away that legal shield. Hmm. I am with everybody 
that tech companies have become much bigger. They need regulation. But nuance destruction of regulation and throwing the kitchen sink to solve all problems is not the right way to address any of these matters. Okay, no, so I understand what you're saying. And obviously, globally, every country uh, is having the same conversation, the same confrontation with some of the social media giants. But Mr. Chima, the point is that in our country, every other social media giant seems to have complied with these norms. And n none of them are having the similar kind of problem that Twitter is. Then it just goes on to seem that only Twitter wants to be defined of where it implements the law, where it doesn't. Very important to note that, in fact, no, the rules are not necessarily being implemented by all firms or entities operating in India. In fact, these rules have been challenged every two weeks since their enactment by a new lawsuit across the Indian Union. You have seen now nearly eight challenges to this, including the fairly high-profile challenge you saw from WhatsApp and Facebook recently. And the reality is, from the very beginning of these rules, they have been uncertain, unclear. Even now, if you were to put, you know, Mr. Duggal, Mishi, me, uh, Rahul and others in a room, we'd probably still be unpacking what the rules mean because they've been drafted in such an overbroad, excessive manner that nearly every lawyer studying the rules indicates that they're very problematic. And more importantly, this seems to be done intentionally. These rules have been put out, even though they have doubtful legal basis, with the, with the intention of putting as much pressure as possible on all tech platforms. And the worry, my worry, isn't necessarily about whether Twitter appoints a grievance officer or not. It'll happen, as Rahul mentioned. And if that's the only tool by itself, I would say there are many other steps. My concern is in between Twitter, for example, as a company which has gone public with the fact that they receive censorship orders from the government of India, right. government of India secret orders that are still not public, which it believes are unconstitutional, that these rules are being pushed down these firms as a form of intimidation, telling them that, telling them that do not dare push back on any Government of India censorship orders. And more troublingly, telling them that don't apply the content governance practices you might apply. For example, tagging an image as being manipulated or being potentially fake and uploaded against political figures in India because that will upset Indian politicians in a way that perhaps the ruling coalition doesn't want. And that's what we should be worried about, that these rules seem to be a surrogate for a massive effort towards intimidation, as Nishi said, not really something aimed to protect user interests, but something that's being used to advance perhaps more concerning censorship interests. So and that's I'm why completely with asking. you on that, Mr. Chima. I am. Uh, and we've had exhaustive conversations with many of, you know, who are on the panel today about the, uh, the these rules and what they intend to do and the validity of them, if at, uh, you know, now that there are eight cases, and you're right about that, in various courts of our country. But Twitter hasn't gone to court. So th that, that, that's the problem part. Twitter hasn't gone to court. Should, Twitter isn't, isn't clearly taking a stand saying we have a problem. They just keep telling us we're going to comply, we're going to comply, and we're going to comply. Perhaps Twitter is being a smart company and trying to see the nine other entities that have gone to court and seeing what happens there. But I think the bigger issue is a government which is choosing to issue press releases and statements on how one company is responding and not addressing the widespread concerns about the implementation of the rules yes. is seeking to distract us. So let's recognize this, that this is a distraction tactic and a tactic that we should not fall for because they're very legitimate concerns about big tech, but also about government overreach that we need to go to. And this conversation is very dangerously posed towards becoming just a distraction. Okay. Not only has Twitter on many accounts not acted on what the government has asked them to do, uh, you know, in terms of taking action against certain accounts, and we know that because many of them, including cartoonist Manjul Nath, shared those emails saying that the Twitter asked us, but we, uh, we, uh, you know, the government asked us, but according to our rules, we didn't see anything problematic, and you're free to take out uh, any legal uh, recourse that you feel like. But Twitter also went ahead and started blocking accounts or deactivating accounts, including our vice president and many RSS functionaries. So Charu Pragya, there will be many who ask this question that is this why now you're finding ways of getting back at Twitter? So I can't figure if Charu is with us or if her feed is frozen. Charu, can you hear us? Am I audible? Yeah, now I, you are. My, my internet is really bad today. So I, I missed hearing your question, Tanvi, and you'll have to uh, put up with my bad connection today. That's fine. I was asking that is, is uh, you know, many would say that you're going after Twitter because it doesn't seem to be following all of your instructions on taking down certain tweets and accounts. And then it went ahead and deactivated some of RS's account uh, and uh, the vice president of our country. No, uh, Tanvi, you know, let's uh, start from uh, the very basics. 
So what has recently happened is a few days back, Twitter has communicated to the government of India that they have appointed an interim chief compliance officer and they will be revealing his name to the government uh, very shortly. Why is it that they have already done an appointment? Why is that name not communicated to the government? What is the government asking you to do? It is to make sure everybody is safeguarded who uses Twitter, that the government wants Twitter to appoint three employees who are specifically supposed to take care of certain aspects of both compliance, um, complaint redressals. If there are certain kinds of grievances, they have to be addressed within a specific frame of time. And that will offer protection to all of us. What has happened in Uttar Pradesh yesterday goes a long way in showing Twitter's two-faced in, uh, investigation tactics, if I can use that word, because not very long ago, certain posts were tagged as manipulated media. I was one of the people whose post was tagged as manipulated media by Twitter. But yesterday, why did Twitter not do any such tagging? Also, when a tweet has been in circulation for 24 hours, and you know how social media works, when something goes viral, even if the first person deletes it, after that, it's like hellfire. How do you stop it? There are snapshots which are on WhatsApp. It's going to reach villages. It's going to reach um, Facebook sometime later. There is no stopping fake news once it's out there. And the only way to stop it is by fixing responsibility. Twitter does not want to take on responsibility because Twitter is an intermediary. Well, if you're an intermediary, comply with the laws like all other tech giants have. And if you want to be the person who decides what is true and what is fake, then take on the status of a publisher, take on the liabilities of a publisher. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. If an Indian company goes and operates on foreign soil, whether it's a pharma company, whether it is a tech company, they do follow the laws of the land. So why can Twitter not do that when it wants to operate in India? Okay. And in the last several months, we have seen country after country after country setting up laws and ensuring Twitter either complies with these laws or Twitter can just sit at home and not operate in that country altogether. I am glad India has not chosen to take that route. All our government wants is that these rules rules which are for our protection they need to be followed with and you know every single thing if twitter says they're doing it i think it's a time buying tactic because if you appoint appointed an officer even but time buying for what one, i am also it? trying to figure out they're buying time to do what they've exactly. bought time for three and a half months Absolutely. until abhijit so and that's my point exactly right. you appointed an officer reveal his name what's the problem until abhijit Clean. They they don't they what are they buying time for to figure out how to protect these people because you know Twitter seems to be uh, you know of the, of the view that they don't want anybody from their company appointed for the for for these places uh, and which is why they're probably buying time to figure what to do extremely scared about the security of their own employees. Uh. Tanvi, I, I, I'm not an advocate for Twitter, so I mean, I really can't answer on their behalf. And I think everyone alerted us to the technicalities which are surrounding this case. I'm grateful for that. Uh, particularly the most important point being that, uh, you know, once that Suraksha coverage is removed, uh, then you're no longer an intermediary, and then you're criminally liable. I mean, that's a huge thing. I mean, Twitter might as well close shop if it's going to admit to this. Because the entire philosophy will completely be disrupted. I mean, it won't be able to function anywhere. I, I was slightly amused by what Charu said, that these laws are actually for the protection of Indians. Um, I think the only thing they're in protection for are the members of the BJP and the RSS and this government, no, which no, is completely on, against any on. form of critique. Look, I'm going to take us quickly. I usually don't do that, but no, maybe Charu, come on. Let me just complete if myself. You'll have a picture of a woman in circulation on social media. That poor woman has no place to go and file a complaint. Look, that, are there are two separate that? things which you allow me to complete. Nobody who's responsible for getting rid of that picture. Are you aware of that? You're sitting on your high. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm citizen before I'm a BJP member. Allow me to finish. Yes, Anshul. No, so, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, Charu, you've made your point. Let him please answer now. Any form, any violation. You know, I'm completely against any kind of violations, which, you know, there's been standing committee in the Rajya Sabha said that any kind of uh, photographs, any kind of videos which go against any form of pornography is completely against that. We should go after them uh, by all accounts, by the mm. full force of the law. I mean, there is no dispute here.
Um, there's nothing regarding that at all. We are talking about the siege mentality of the government. I'm going to take a strictly normative position, uh, not going to get ensnared by the technicalities which have been dealt with, or oh, provides which are not responding, they will respond or not respond, I don't know, uh, maybe tomorrow they will or not. I, I'm just going to take a normative position on what these rules and, and regulations actually are. There is a particular context to these rules. Okay. Peter was a kind of an uncharted, uh, a lawless frontier by, uh, for which the government had no control over a couple of years back. Uh, when they started this massive clampdown that began with the CAA, essentially, that was the turning point. And they saw all these people in JNU, in Jamia, all these people coming out. There was a kind of a Jan Salab that automatically erupted here. They decided how, what are the different ways they're going to clamp this down. there have been a series of abuse of different kind of laws, including UAPA, including uh, the Sedition Act, including the Security Act. In fact, the UAP, I must say, because the peg is that the High Court has come out in, in a very searing indictment of the central government's position saying that, well, you know, um, t any act of protest is simply not terrorism. And any wanton use of such laws will, you know, actually uh, are being used to suppress freedom of speech. I mean, there's a huge indictment by the High Court. And that is exactly what has been happening in this country at the moment. The Supreme Court again has come down and said freedom of speech is a fundamental act. And we are seeing from time and again that these laws came out as an executive action without any consultative process. Must remember, there was no consultative process. In which is why, which is why, uh, if anybody law, who has a problem, uh, which is why, you know, and we've had debates on it, the courts will need to look at it. And now, you know, many have gone to the court on every aspect, on every clause uh, that is problematic. The, the social process, media giants should go to the should, uh, go to the court and sort it out. But to be in the middle of it, uh, Anshul, I'm just saying, but so, to be in the so, middle so of nowhere, to not to comply. Just, just 30 seconds and I'll come back to you. To, to not comply, to not legally challenge it, to be in the middle of nowhere, to on certain days to attack something is manipulated media, on certain days not do it and not give any explanation to people, to not be transparent into what goes into your decision making to anybody, whether it's to your users or it is to your people. That is the problem here. So either you comply with these rules or you challenge them. But at some point, every other country across the world is trying to figure out how to make these social media giants more accountable and transparent. Not under government control, of course. That, uh, that, that's the difference that I was trying to make. Sorry, you were, you were finishing your point, Anshul. No, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I completely agree with you. This is, we are heading towards, uh, the larger point is we are heading towards what has been said in elected autocracy. This is an Orwellian state. The pros, the punishment is in the process itself, as was established by the Pinjara Thor activists. They were lying in jail for uh, 13 months without any reprieve. Of course, the courts will come and intervene. You okay. know, in, in, uh, in the Sedition Act, there's been a 90... 98% actually acquittal rate. That means only two people were found guilty. Of mm. course, when the courts will come in, but how many months will that take? The government doesn't care. Yeah. It just wants to set an example. They want your head on a stake. They want your head on a stake and tell the others, look, this is what's going to happen to you. Okay. If you raise your voice against this government, we're going to come at you with the full force of the law. We've weaponized everything. Um, you know, because we can go to the Twitter office with 12 policemen in the middle of the night uh, for, for, to serve a notice. Absolutely absurd. I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I would say I mean, that the government and the Delhi police definitely uh, needs to find that special unit uh, and cell of the Delhi police and send them to verify the addresses of Natasha Narwal uh, uh, and her colleague uh, so that they can be given bail once the High Court has ordered that. I mean, the Delhi police needs three days to verify those addresses, but is very quick to land up at the Twitter's office uh, for when they are interested in. Three of our experts wanted to make a point. We're going to go one That's by right, one. Yeah. We're going to go one by one. To you first, Mr. Chima, and then I'll also go to Mishi and Rahul. So I think it's very important this point that's been raised about, you know, international efforts to try and regulate big tech. And I think Mishi also noted this. I think the interesting parallel actually of asked for India is what Trump tried to do. Trump, you know, now former President Trump in his last few months in office issued an executive order in the United States attempting to influence and cut down the legal protection provided by their equivalent of our law. They call it Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act. We call it Section 79 for Information Technology Act. What's striking was in the US, it was clear that that was a blatant attempt to put pressure 
on tech platforms to not take more measures against his party or others who were doing this. And I think we need to recognize that some of this conversation here is coming from that. It's an attempt to say, we don't want you to apply these policies about manipulated media, flagging other measures in India. And that's why the very important point we need to leave this with is that these rules are fundamentally unlawful. And if you're talking about how one part of it is being implemented versus another, to me, it reminds me of how we, we talk to people in emergency saying, oh, you're not following this. Yes, these laws are unjust, but you have to follow them till they exist. And let's leave aside what Twitter does here. The onus is on the government. If the government passes excessive rules that are not supported by parliament, that are beyond the constitution, the ball is in their court to explain why what they're doing is not perverse. Rahul, do you want to come in on that? Is the, the ball is on in the government's court and the onus is on them? I have two quick points to, to make before that. Firstly, about the, the manipulated media attack, I think there is a significant difference, and this is important for everyone to note, a significant difference between a doctored video and one which is disputed. Now, for, for Twitter to identify, to simply label, and let me put it as frankly as I can, I don't see anything in the intermediary guidelines or anywhere else which controls the ability of a platform, to a private platform, to add label, to add labels to a particular tweet, whether it's wise or not, okay? So as far as if, if, if people who, whose tweets have been labeled have a complaint, they have every right to make every complaint about them and, and make sure Twitter follows it up, etc., etc. But there's no law which provides that you, you have to label everything in one way or the other. So uh, you, you have to remember that this is a private platform, and at some point, we have to follow their rules. Uh, sec secondly, as far as uh, uh, about, about the, uh, you know, so, and, okay, and so sorry, I'm interrupting you there, but you've raised a very interesting point. And like Charu was pointing out, she was on our last debate. She was one of those people whose uh, uh, tweet also during the alleged Congress toolkit got labeled as manipulated media. Is it is it the social media uh, platform's responsibility? Because we often talk about how will this platform curb fake news, misleading news, manipulated news. Do we expect them to do this? Should we expect them, Rahul, at all to do this? And if we do, then how do we make them accountable to have a balance and a uniform implementation? Look, the simple the simple fact of the matter is that until uh, until this controversy about a month or two months ago, everybody almost everybody was unanimous in the fact that the tech pl platform will have to do something. The earlier long time philosophy of doing nothing completely failed in the light of after the 2016 elections in America and, and England and uh, uh, Cambridge Analytica, etc. So there was a general movement for many many years pushing the pushing tech companies into doing some kind of regu self regulation to ensure that there is some kind of regulation of fake news. Now, how do you regulate fake news while protecting free speech the simple answer is label things and make sure so that people can make up their own minds about it i cannot think of a more reasonable way for a tech plat plat platform to respect free speech and yet ensure that uh, the fakest of the fake news for example does not does not spread further i don't mean to any disrespect to the other panelists over here i'm sure that the her tweet was correct or for whatever it's worth but the simple fact is that when you put yourself in the hands of this platform are you allow it to take place yes we, we what we are entitled to is a certain fairness by the platform in the sense that, you know, Twitter should, show, and, and the, maybe the law can regulate this to some extent. But at some point, you have to say, you know, if a restaurant throws you out because you're misbehaving, it's pretty much the restaurant's right, isn't it? Because they're, it is their platform and it is their restaurant you're going there to eat. Similarly, it's their platform you're going, going to use it. So at some point, we have to surrender some of these of our rights of complete free speech to, to the platform. And that said, for the longest time, all the tech platforms resisted this for, for ages. Until finally, I think the, the key moment in this was the January 6th insurrection in the United States, which everyone said was followed by fake news. Yeah. When they discovered the serious problems with this, therefore they banned their sitting President Trump, and therefore they started labeling tweets. I think it's a, it's a, if you think about it, I mean, can you imagine an Indian company banning your, your, the sitting Prime Minister or the President or, or, or anything at all? So for them, for people to now say that, you know, oh, Twitter is, is uh, co 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 cocking the snook at Indian law, they're pretty much cock a snook everywhere, which is perhaps part of their business model, you know, being uh, free speech people, etc. And the last thing I wanted to point was, again, and this is a matter of perspective, who is Twitter actually trying to defend when they don't immediately block everybody's tweets? Who are the people who are being protected over here? Hmm. It's pretty much Indian citizens, right? The government of India doesn't care if, if about banning somebody's speech when it's made in some other country or in some other jurisdiction. The simple fact is that the people whose speech is is being blocked or people whose uh, handles are being uh, uh, targeted one way or the other are also Indian citizens. And what is actually being impacted by this is discourse in India, which ought to be based on this. And the simple fact of the matter is it is the government of India which is bound by the constitution and, and yeah. Twitter as a private platform is simply bound by the law. 
yes of course they should follow the law and if they don't they don't like it they should challenge it and there are as raman has been saying as well there are serious issues with this with this uh, with the intermediary guidelines and i'm sure in the fullness of time the courts will decide one way or the other yeah you know because what was happening was there was a larger sentiment of making the social media platforms accountable you know how do you ensure that they have some responsibility for the level of fake news or even you know abuse sexual abuse uh, nude pictures porn every other kind of crime and, and at some point while we were having that discussion came in these new sort of rules which now has put a big question mark on who has the control is it only the government without giving us any explanation on why they are forcing twitter or asking twitter to remove certain content or to block certain handles so we went from one extreme to the other I, the I, real answer the real i'll just finish in one in one minute the real answer to this is to empower the users but to shift complete power from the platform to the, to the, uh, to the government also might not be wise for, for at least for a citizen's point of view okay granted yes mishi has been wanting to make a point to her first and then charu thank you um well i want to say is that i do practice in the united states and uh, to raman's point about the fact that uh, uh, there is something to be said that twitter only started labeling tweets in june of 2020 when trump was on his way out um we all understand that the engagement on these platforms is an important part of how their business model works and they would like to be actually left alone and all kind of content to be uh, circulating as much as we also know that such uh, content gets much more engagement than when you're trying to ch check things and uh, spread education having said that and uh, this is to just echo the point that there is a lot of regulation coming all around the world and i'm going to underscore the point nobody is trying anywhere in the world whether you're in the united states congress or you're in the european union or anywhere else i'm not talking about the authoritarian regimes i'm talking about democracies nobody is trying to make uh, uh, employees personally criminally liable for that it's a very important point second thing i'm going to say is that it's a little amusing that a private platform which has now become the default mode of us communicating but is being actually held to far higher standard than our own government is being subjected to the government is the one against whom we do have the rights of fundamental uh, rights of uh, right to free speech and expression we don't have it against private platforms we do need more transparency from these uh, platforms we do need genuine engagement but the entire way this is all been handled not in the courts when legal matters have been challenged but through tweets or regurgitating matters or relitigating them on platforms like twitter itself now speaks of how we are trying to destroy the nuance which is required for any such regulation you can't do privacy you can't do data protection you can't do also content moderation through a subordinate legislation like these rules as they have come up with now the rules have certain definitions which are ambiguous we want clarity about that and to say this i the political parties i'm i'm a little amused because um i think it's like the french proverb the more things change the more they stay the same 2011 upa was in power that right. time they tried to come up with their set of rules and that was also censorship by proxy now it is a different government in power and they want to do it everybody wants to tell us you're trying to address users rights have you asked what users rights are actually being happening here if we were to actually trace the sources of misinformation and disinformation how many of them will actually lead to political parties and their players and well, this is all sentence. across the spectrum that is why to always say said we are only trying to address child sexual abuse material or only women's protection sometimes actually feels that what is there is a there is a difference between the action and what is ostensibly being done and said to say this is our intention the second thing also is that what is sauce for goose must also be sauce for gander you can't have different set of rules when the recipient is your own party's functionary mm. and you want expect something else and this that is why every time this power of subordinate legislation is used to arm twist that's what the problem seems to be happening here this is not to say that twitter is not supposed to be more transparent they are not supposed to comply they did comply to some extent i will i'm not their lawyer i think maybe they would be wise enough to hire either of us perhaps because that seems <laughs> to be the right strategy here but jokes apart i would say that 
because twitter inc needs to have an actual india office to have somebody who will be the chief compliance officer on a permanent basis there are two names at least i have seen which are of a lawyer obviously but yeah. the person who will be receiving the complaints as a grievance redressal mechanism so if my idea is i should not be able to talk to any automated thing but i would like to talk to a person there is a name of a person there should be some compliance on this but let's not forget the larger point which raman has also pointed out several times what does this mean for us and why are we as users asked to sit on the sideline and being uh, to watch this public theater be between the fat cats which is these companies and the powerful governments and nobody is asking us what about our rights and this is it this becomes only about people who have large following who are functionaries of political parties but not the regular person who also wants to speak and who's now being made uh, a, a somebody to who who's dependent either on this company's whim or on whatever the company government decides is the right thing to do no you are you're right there but le- let me just uh, you know also highlight the the problem also lies in when the government or people want to know certain things from twitter regarding a case and the response that comes is that oh well you know what this though in respect to the india market is handled by somebody who is sitting abroad which is what happens uh, 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 you know with twitter so if you if the government needs to know who are they going to ask these questions to if the twitter india md is going to turn around and say this isn't under my control somebody sitting in uk or us or wherever is is running that function then that is a problem uh, that has to be resolved uh, charu pragya but there is also the concern about the new laws and what the government hopes to achieve from it how do we know because there is no transparency for how many child porn sexual abuse women harassment issues were raised by the government and asked to, uh, you know how many times did government ask twitter to take action against it and how many times did government ask twitter to take action against the critics of government So uh, Tanvi I've got two issues that I've been wanting to talk about um, for uh, the last I don't know very very long but uh, I'm going to bring them both up one by one so everybody who celebrated the fact that Mr Patra tweet was tagged as manipulated media and those who reshared that information were also tagged as manipulated media but today when Zubair's tweet is not tagged as such and senior people even like Mr Gandhi are sharing it 24 hours later without checking whether whether it's verified whether it's true uh, and twitter takes no action i think that's arbitrary and anyone today sitting on this panel who's talking about democracy who's talking about free speech they have exposed their hypocrisy so either you talk about it from both ends of the spectrum you don't have to agree with me but you have to ensure that i'm allowed to speak as much as you are allowed to speak and the second thing is twitter is nobody to decide what is right and what is wrong and if they want to decide they have to reveal that process to all of us that's the first point point i wanted to make and everybody who's talking today has conveniently forgotten the implications of a tweet like yesterday's which could have snowballed into anything anything yeah, without simple. without telling anything. us charu pragya without anything. telling us without revealing it to the people neither does the government have any right to tell twitter what to censor and what not to censor That, how is that right how is that right that you don't like a cartoon you tell the tw- t- twitter to take it down to block that account you don't like a fact checker you tell no, twitter no, to I'm, block I'm, it to take no, that I'm, down and I'm, everything I'm, else I'm, that goes on all the trolling that goes on from one camp to whether it's men or women and all the kind of abuses that go on you don't act against that you don't ask twitter to act against that what gives government that right yeah so that was the second part of the point that i wanted to make and it is this why is everybody hell bent on assuming a law is made to be misused can we not be a little better about this can we not understand that a government might or might not be there tomorrow but laws which are in place for the protection of its citizens are going to remain there so it's like assuming that maybe two people out of 100 misuse the dowry law 
are you saying that we should just get rid of it this is what people who are advocating against laws to keep social media giants in check legally should not be made and i am not in agreement with that see like okay. i said if it is free speech it should be from both the ends of the spectrum if something is manipulated it should be tagged in both the ends of the spectrum and if nobody is there to take responsibility well the government well i think i think sure okay so that's that your view i think rahul addressed that in the in, in initial part of his comments when he said that the two are not exactly uh, comparable uh, uh, so i am a little short on time but very quickly 30 seconds to Rahul Narayan and then to uh, Raman Chima. Yes. I was just saying one thing. The police, the police, for example, is disputing that the account of the of the of the accused person, but uh, there is no proof either which way, whether it's one way or the other, whether yeah. it's correct or not. And the police is saying that it's one way, but of course the courts will eventually decide this. About the manipulated about the manipulated media tag earlier, that was simply because uh, the apparently the uh, they had uh, facts, uh, they had sourced the fact, and they could see that the document itself was false. So there is a substantial difference between the two things. It's not fair to compare the two. It's not about narrative versus narrative. It's simply about what is genuinely a, what is called a deep fake and what is not a deep fake. And I think this is a very serious issue again in tech policy. I completely agree with all the panelists that you know this is a serious issue and there is an issue of power, power and play over here as well. Okay. But I mean I don't think this is a fair fair comparison at all. Okay. Yes. So I want to share one thing. So when people say trust us, when a government comes and says trust us when it comes to rule making in this space, I'm just reminded that in 2011, Mr. Arun Jaitley, the late Mr. Shri Arun Jaitley, in Parliament said, I am not against regu against regulation, but I'm against over-regulation, regulation that harms our fundamental rights. And he was referring to the predecessor of these rules, and that's the important point he raised, which comes back to us today. This government has chosen to go by a rule making mechanism, avoiding Parliament that directly harms human rights. But going back to the important point that that who was making about trusting us. Perhaps I would trust the government of India better, and this is something perhaps she could articulate to ministerial colleagues and others, that if the government of India made public its censorship orders today, Correct. perhaps I would trust it more. Since Correct. February, we've seen none of it. The government even today, every day, every week, rejects RTI requests on that topic. Perhaps that's something that could be done. Could you make us trust the government more by releasing all those orders tomorrow? day after, maybe the government would have a stronger moral high ground on Twitter to advance the legitimate issues that Mishi talked about as well. Correct. Yeah, and, and I just want to go back to what Mishi said earlier as well. It's 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 a, a, uh, agnostic of the party in power. It is also perhaps not about a specific country. It's how governments tend to function when it comes to censorship and the use of law. Uh, and we've had similar debates when UPA was in power and now it's, and now it's the NDA. But if there is a problem with the law, it's about the problem with the law or the use and the implementation of that law and how it is used. That's where the debate lies, irrespective of who is in power. In this case, it is Charu's party. Completely out of time. Thank you so much uh, for everybody for joining us. This debate is not ending at all anytime soon. It's actually only heating up. Uh, multiple cases which are in court over various clauses uh, of the new rules. But those, those court cases are yet to pick up steam. One company that hasn't gone to court is Twitter that is also not complying with the government regulations which is a little puzzling because they've had three and a half months and they've not done it so far. They've put out those job vacancies, they've not hired anybody so far and one wonders why this delay. In the meantime, the shadow boxing really between the two sides continues. Twitter takes certain action, Twitter puts out certain emails to their users saying the government wants us to stop you but we haven't done so yet. On the other hand, the government now has turned around and said you don't have the legal shield of being an intermediary anymore. So be open and be ready to be booked in multiple cases. The first one has already happened. Thank you so much for joining us on this controversy.